God of praise. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to everybody. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. My soul shall make a boast unto the Lord. Amen. That's what we come to do. Boast unto the Lord. Brag on the Lord. Give him the praise. Give him the honor. Honor him in all his ways. Amen. Amen. Good morning to those online. Amen. That's watching us today. Go ahead and welcome everybody in on the platform today so that they can see that we are the friendly church beside the road. Amen. And to all of you inside today, go ahead and welcome God in on your road. Come on, welcome him on your road this morning. Hallelujah. He's going to do something great and mighty on your behalf because you showed up. Hallelujah. He shows up for you. You showed up for him. Amen. Amen. And together we can work it out. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We come giving you all glory and praise this morning, Lord God. Thank you for a new day. Thank you for a new time, a new glory, Lord God. Thank you for a new favor. Thank you for new grace today. Thank you for another start over again today, oh God. Chance after chance you give each day that we wake up, oh God. So we give you the praise and glory right now, saying be a part of this service. Move right now among the service right now, Lord God. Before we sing a note, before we sing a prayer, before we do anything, oh God, you cover us right now, Lord God. Let your power fall this morning, Lord God. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you shower down on us today. Endow us with your presence. Endow us with your love. Help us to feel your glory today in the house. We step back, oh God, that you step up. We come to recognize you, oh God. You be king in the service today, oh God. You be mighty in the service today, oh God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your peace, oh God. Thank you for the ones who are going to give their lives today, oh God. You're already working on their hearts, oh God, to come to you the way that they are, oh God. We just give you praise and glory right now. Thank you for the finances in the church, oh God, the tithers and the givers right now. We thank you, Lord God, that that will go forth in you today, oh God. We thank you for the word right now, Lord God, that it will come to save and heal and change and deliver in the name of Jesus. We just come in agreement with your presence, in agreement with your anointing right now, Lord God, saying you are welcome. 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 And we thank you. We thank you because you give us the gift of life. We thank you because you give us the gift to see. We thank you because you give us the gift to hear. We thank you, Lord. We have gifts to give back to you. That's why we come to thank you today. You're worthy, Lord God. Bless our pastor and first lady in their absence, oh God. Continue to refresh, renew, and release unto them all that they need, oh God. Lift them up right now. Strengthen them right now. Empower them right now to do those things that you have called them to do. We thank you right now that you are worthy of the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on with joy. Hallelujah, the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, he's worthy. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We come to praise him and give him the glory. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, God. Come on, we're going to take it back a little bit today. Hallelujah.
together and praise him. Yeah. I love to praise his name. Come on, is there anybody out there love to praise him? Yeah. I love to praise his name. Oh. I love to Come on. For oh, he's my rock. He's my rock. My rock. My rock. My rock. My rock.
But those that weren't able to do it, if they give him a praise, nobody won't know. Hallelujah. He responds to your praise. He responds to your worship. Hallelujah. Glory, God. I'm sorry. This is just what I do by myself in the mirror at home. Hallelujah. cry be magnified in this your holy temple in this your holy place and we will rise to Zion heights to praise and glory Okay. 
on, there's somebody else in another place in time. Hallelujah. Come on, give it to him today. Hallelujah. Don't be selfish. Oh, how we love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, oh, how we praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How we worship you, oh, Lord. Amen. We love him because he first loved us. He loved us first, so he came and got us because of love. It was love that kept him on the cross. It was love that taught him to draw and come and get me. It was love, it was love, it was, it was love that allowed him to stay in allowed him to stretch his stretch his body and, and stretch his arms and 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 pierce his hands and, and they drove it in his side and he he hung he bled and he died hallelujah because he had me on his mind hallelujah and because of that I love him I got to say I love you I got to say I worship you. I got to say I lift you up. by choice he stayed in the grave for three days he did it by choice he went down to hell and he took the keys and he took the death the sting and he did it by choice he could have came back but he stayed down for three days three long days and three long nights but he did it by choice he had me on his mind Amazing grace. That's amazing grace. That's amazing grace. That's amazing grace. Because he knew, he knew I was a wretched soul. He knew I was full of sin. He knew I would stray away. But in spite of, he still chose to love me. And for that, Lord, I say I thank you. I love you. I lift you up. I worship you. I magnify your name because he's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He loved me first. You have to remind yourself that lest we get beside ourselves. Remember, he chose us. He came after us. He saw our conditioning. He was driven by love. Amen. For that we say, Lord, I thank you. I, I worship you. Because you deserve it. He deserves our best praise. He deserves our worship. Because he's truly worthy to be praised. Amen, amen. 
God is good, and we we thank Him and we praise and we lift Him up. We thank the praise team, Amen, for ushering us into ushering us into the presence of the Lord, Amen. And how many of you know that when you worship, you open up, you allow Him to come in. Because when I worship, I take the attention off of me, and I put the attention on him. And when I put the attention on him, it opens up. It opens him up to move, amen? Because sometimes stuff I have you closed off. Life happens. Stuff get in the way, and every now and then you have to steal away. Steal away and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. And all you're doing is opening up the door. Hey, Amen. All you're doing is giving an invitation to allow him to come in. And, and when he comes in, his presence changes things. I'm no longer the same when I let him in. We serve a game-changing God. He comes in and he changes my situation. He comes in and he breaks some stuff up. And he shakes some stuff up. And he turns some stuff around. But you got to worship him. You looking for a release, but I want to tell you that your release is in your release. Yes, yes, yes. You're looking for a release, but your release is tied up in your release. When you release some worship, when you release some praise, then he'll release some stuff unto you. Somebody need to release something today. Take you 30 seconds right now and release something today. Oh, Lord, we lift you up. We magnify you. We open up right now, Father God. Yeah, I need some stuff to change in my life. I'm looking for a release in my life. I can't go through it no more. I done seen this enough. I'm opening up, Lord, so you can release it. Release it on your people right now, Father God. Release it on your people right now. Yeah, yeah. I got some stuff I want released. I got some stuff that I offer up a sacrifice of praise. I offer up a sacrifice of praise. I don't have everything I want. Everything ain't looking. I offer up a sacrifice of a sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice of praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, honor my sacrifice. Honor my sacrifice, Father. Yeah, 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 honor my sacrifice. I don't have much, but what I have, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to sacrifice it right now. I'm going to lay it on the altar right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to lay it on the altar and kill it. Lay it on the altar and kill it right now. Put it on the altar. Get what you need right now. What you need right now. I want you to think about it right and put it on the altar right now. Put it on the altar. Lay it on the altar right now. Lay it on the altar. Lord, I lay it down. I lay my kids down to you right now. I sacrifice them to you right now. I'm laying it on your altar. I'm putting it on the altar right now. All of my sacrifice. Yeah, you getting the release. Yeah, you getting the release. You getting the release right now. As you own it on the sacrifice. Sacrifice it on the altar right now. Put it on the altar. Lay it down. Lay it down. Stop carrying that stuff. Stop carrying that stuff. You better lay it down. Yeah, lay it on down. You've been carrying that for too long. You've been holding it too long. You got to release it. Put it on the altar. Put it, I dare you to put it on the altar. I dare you to put it down. I dare you to put that thing down. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to put it on the altar. Yeah. Stop carrying that stuff.
Aleluya. 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 Lay it on the altar. Take your time and lay it on the altar. Take your time right now and lay it on the altar. Yes. up a sacrifice sometimes your praise and your worship is a sacrifice because my flesh says no my flesh says no my flesh says this don't feel good my flesh says this don't look good but I'm going to offer up a sacrifice I'm going to praise him anyhow I'm going to worship him anyhow devil you can't stop me from doing it I'm going to do it anyhow I'm going to sacrifice it right now yeah, yeah, release it. As you release, he gonna release. As you release, he gonna release. As you release, he gonna release. I'm trying to move, but he won't let me move. I'm trying to get away from this thing, but it, it, it won't get up off me. As you release, he, hey, 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 hey. I feel his spirit in this place. Hey, I feel his spirit in this place. I feel his spirit in this place. Somebody get their release. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Hey, hey. He's stirring up the water. I tell you, he's stirring up the water. His anointing is so thick in this place right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your anointing and your spirit in this place. He's stirring up the water. He's stirring up the water. Hallelujah. He's stirring up the water. He's stirring up the water. I dare you to step in right now. I dare you to lift him up and praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just got to thank you, Jesus, in my spirit. I don't even know what I'm thanking him for, but I just got to thank you, Jesus, in my spirit. I just got to thank you, Jesus, in my spirit. I just got to thank you, Jesus, in my spirit. I just got to thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You better thank him. Put a praise on it right now. Put a down payment on it right now. Everybody can't understand that. Some folks will think you crazy. But when you know, you know. And I got to thank you, Jesus, in my spirit. I don't know what it is. It's just a thank you, Jesus. I got a praise in my spirit this morning. That means something on the way.
something on the way. Something's 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 on the way. I can feel it. Something's on the way. God is up to something. Something's on the way. Amen. 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 Yes, you just made your purchase. It's out for delivery. Keep going back and check the tracking because it's on the way. Yes. Hallelujah. Hey, and the devil going to show enough be mad when you get it. He thank you praising now, but honey, when I get it, when it finally come, yeah. Hallelujah. God is good, amen. When you release, he releases. When he, when you release. He'll release. Hallelujah. And like pastor say, I ain't trying to hype you. I'm trying to help you. Cause that thing jumped on me. That wasn't on my agenda. That was from the Lord. That wasn't from me. That wasn't in my plans. He stopped by this morning to bless you. It's not about me. That was all from here. He stopped by this place this morning. I don't know what you did before here. You must have pregame. Somebody praised at home. Somebody pregamed at the house and that joker showed up this morning. Hallelujah. Y'all done showed out this morning at the house before you got to church. You must have started the party before you got here. What you say? Hey, hey, hey. Pastor going to be so proud of us because we started the party before we got here. You done sit up at that house and worship before you got here and that thing just ran over. Hallelujah. Pre-gamed on me. Got me all out of sorts up in here. I didn't even come for all of that. But it was so good to me. I can't even lie to you. I'm feeling good right now. You know that second win we talked about? I'm feeling a second wind, right? I think we got a Holy Ghost high up in here this morning. I think some people might be drunk off the spirit up in here. Is you drunk this morning? Hey man, hey man. Help me, Holy Ghost. 
Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to contain myself. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to contain it. I'm trying to contain it. But somebody needs to know you will not leave here the same this morning. After the encounter you have with Jesus this morning, after the experience you have with the Holy Ghost this morning, you will not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good and he's worthy. He's worthy. Don't forget this all started with love. It all started with love. Amen. He loved us. So in turn, we love him. Yeah, it started with love. For God so loved the world that he gave. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue to worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue to worship him. Continue to worship him. Hallelujah. Only the worshipers. Hallelujah. We worship you. Hallelujah. See, it's not about hype. It's not about hype. It's about the help. And as you worship, he's going to send some help your way. You, he, he sees you. He understands your plight. He understands where you are. He's going to send you some help. He's going to send, as you worship, he's sending you help right now. Keep worshiping. As you praise him, you open up, but now you're worshiping, and he's sending you some internal stuff now. Internally, he's sending you some strength. That second wind you need, he's sending it right now. As you worship, a fresh wind, a fresh wind. As you worship, a fresh wind, a fresh anointing. Hallelujah, we thank you, God. We lift you up, Father God. Yes, yes, worship. Worship, no music, just your mouth. Worship, open up and worship. Hallelujah. Go into that secret place. Just you and him. Hallelujah. So he can deposit something in your spirit. Strength for the journey. Amen. Strength for the journey. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. You can worship him at the house if you're watching on the live stream. Shut everything down and worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship him. Hallelujah. 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 I see breakthrough right now as you worship. I'm feeling breakthrough right now as you worship. Strongholds are being torn down on behalf of your kids. The stronghold of it, worship for your kids and your grandkids right now. Hallelujah. I feel his anointing in this place right now. Barriers are being destroyed. Strongholds are being broken down right now. Worship. Hallelujah. Honor our sacrifice this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Not for everybody to stand. Understand. Get into your secret place. Hallelujah. 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 As I was studying this week, there was a passage that stuck out to me. And, and it was a passage about the man that was at the, the gate. He was at the gate called Beautiful. And he saw two disciples. And the Bible says that he was lame. He was lame from birth. And he had to be carried there every day. And he seen the two disciples. And he was prepared to ask them for some money. And, and they told him, they say, silver and gold I do not have. He said, but what I do have. I do have, what I do have, I have Jesus. And what happened was he went there expecting money, but they had something deeper. I want to tell you today that you may be looking for the wrong boom. See, he came looking for something tangible. He came looking for money. They had something better than money. What do you mean? What I'm saying to you is you don't need something tangible. What you need is something internal. It's deeper than money. It's deeper than a job. Stop looking surface level. I, he he want to give you a boom that's underneath. See, you can praise for the tangible, but when you worship, you prepare and you open for something underneath. God is good, amen. He's worthy to be praised. We thank him for showing up this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to move forward towards the word of God. If you'll grab your, grab your Bibles and turn to Hebrews. Hebrews. We're going we're gonna to stop at Hebrews around Hebrews 4.24. You can go to Hebrews 4.24. But I do want to share you some scripture from, with you some scriptures from the previous chapter in chapter three. So I'll read, and then when we get to four, two, we can all read together. Amen. So I'm gonna start at verse sixteen, Hebrews chapter three. It says, "For some, that some is the Israelites. Everybody say Israelites. When they had heard, somebody, everybody say heard, did provoke." How be it, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. So we're talking about the Israelites, and they all heard. Um, but they did not all come out. Verse number 17. But with whom he was grieved, that he is God. Somebody say God. He was grieved 40 years. Was it not them, somebody say them, that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? You know what a carcass is, don't you? It's a dead body. So some of them, somebody say them, some of them fell in the wilderness. And to whom swear he that they should enter into his rest. So in place of that rest, I want to use the word boom. So he said to whom he swore, he, Jesus, I meant God, that they should enter into his boom. But to them, somebody say them, they believe not. 
So we see that they could not enter in. They couldn't enter into what? That boom. Because of unbelief. So we say that they could not enter in because of, they, because of unbelief. So look at verse uh, chapter 4. He said, let us therefore fear. Let us. Now we're talking about us. We just got finished talking about who? Them. Now we're talking about us. He said, therefore let us fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest or entering into his boom, any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse number two, for unto us, somebody say us, us. was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. I want to preach from you from the topic, you got to mix it to get to your boom. Now, I got to keep it real. Lady C did this the other day. I said, oh, that'll preach right there. You got to mix it. You got to mix it. It ain't going to boom unless you mix it. Father God, we thank you for your presence in this place. The table is set. Father God, help us to get what it is you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. On last week, the woman of God encouraged us to eat. Amen. She said, eat, eat, eat. And she prompted us and encouraged us to eat more. And then she was talking about Elijah. When Elijah was down and out, he was touched. And he said, you got to eat. He told him to eat a second time. And he said, because this journey is too great for thee. Amen. How many of you know that we all on a journey? And I don't know about you, but my journey is great. This ain't just no ordinary journey, but I'm on a great journey. But the reality is I have to eat. Amen. Because if I don't eat, I won't be able to finish. So it was the spirit of God was telling him, eat because this journey is too great for thee. In other words, you cannot do this on your own. It's going to take some strength. It's going to take some energy. That's in the natural. And it's the same way in the spiritual. So we have to stay at the table and eat. Somebody say eat. eat. Turn to your neighbor and say keep on eat. Yeah, you ought to be fat. And you should have learned at an early age. When it's time to eat, one thing you don't do, you don't play with your food. Amen? You don't play with your food and you also you don't waste your food. You can't mess over a good meal. And we understand that in order for us to get to our boom, we got to be able to mix our faith with the word. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we have to understand and, and, and keep in mind that this is a faith walk. Every day that we walk and every day that we live, we do it not by our own strength, but we do it by our faith. The Bible says that faith that we, the just shall live by faith. Then it also commands us that we walk by faith and not by sight. Somebody say you got to mix it. Yeah, you got to make sure you mixing it. Because we see in our text that them heard it, but they did not profit from, from it. And when you think about a prophet, a prophet is simply the difference between what I spent and what I get. The, the, the prophet is what I have left. So when you look at that and it said it did not profit them, it means that the word did not bring them any value. No value. No change. Nothing from nothing equals nothing. Somebody say you got to mix it up. I can give you the recipe. I can write it down for you. I can give you the ingredients. I can tell you how to bake it. I can show you one that I've baked. You can have all the stuff set. You can put your apron on. You can turn your music on and talk about how you finna bake this cake. But until you mix it. Yeah, you got to mix it. 
And see, that word mix it, when you mix ingredients, what it does is this. You take in one or more things and you combining them together till they become one. That went over somebody here. See, the word got to be so in you. You, when you really mix it up, you become the word. <laughs> see, when you really, when you re- see, the word of God says that out of the abundance of the heart, one speaks. So when I'm really eating, when, I, when I'm on the job, all I can think about is something pastor said the other day. All I can think about is something I heard Lady C. Preet talking about in the morning. Oh, I, I can't, you, what she said the other day? It, I, it just keeps, it stay on you because you're mixing it with your face. Now, we're talking about us because we've seen what happened to. We ain't talking about us, are we now? Because we've seen what happened to them. They heard the word. And if you look at it, it says that God was grieved with them. And the reason why he was grieved with them was because they heard the word. They heard the word, but they spoke contrary to what they heard. All they did was murmur and complain. So he offered them to rest. He was taking them from slavery into the promised land. Who wouldn't take that deal? You'd be surprised. He gave them the word, but they did not mix it with faith. Tell yourself, I got to mix it up. Yeah, I got to mix it up. Now, I want to talk about this mixing. And the first thing I want to talk about is the M. You have to make your mouth work for you. You got to make that mouth work for you. Because we know in the word of God that the word says that life and death are in the power of the. So we know that this thing is powerful. You got to mix it up. Because if you don't mix it up, unfortunately, I'm here to tell you, you're going to end up looking dumb. What you mean by that? Turn to Luke. Turn to Luke for me. Luke chapter 1. I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to look dumb. But if I don't mix it, Luke chapter 1. Let's look at verse 19. Can we do that? Now, I want to give you a little backdrop. There was a man by the name of Zacharias. Everybody say Zacharias. And in the days of King Herod, a certain priest named Zacharias, and he had a wife named Elizabeth. Everybody say Elizabeth. The word of God says they they were both righteous. In other words, they was in right standing with God. They were walking in all his commandments and his ordinance. They were blameless. But verse 7 says they had no child. So you see godly people. You don't see sinners and heathens here. You see godly people, but they still had an issue. They were still in need of a a boom. So Zechariah went to the temple to pray. And when he was in the temple, the word of God said that an angel of the Lord appeared to him. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Now he was in the church praying. And God showed up, and he was scared. My, my, my. And the angel told him, he said, fear not, for the prayer you pray, it is heard. And that wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name James, John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great, somebody say great. In the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And shall be filled with even in the mother's womb. So this guy going to be so powerful, before he even get here, he going to be filled with the Holy Ghost in the womb. So Zacharias ought to have been shouting, because he just heard 
a word. And the word was, listen, the word was specific. It told us that he was a godly man. He did nothing wrong, but he had an issue. He was in the church praying. The angel showed up in the church. He was scared. The angel calmed him down and said, look here, man, I come to give you up. We ain't talking about us. We talking about. I'm trying to take you somewhere. If you don't mix it, you're going to end up looking dumb. So he told him all this. He said, and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias. To turn the heart. He said he's going to be a preacher. And he's going to save souls. And look at verse 18. And Zacharias, after he heard the word that was for his need. And Zacharias said unto the angel, where shall I know this? I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. So he heard a word, but he couldn't receive Keep in mind, where was he at when he heard the word? He was in the church praying for. What he was praying for showed up. What you going to do when that thing you just worship over and you just pray for in church mess around and show up on you? Are you really going to be ready to hear what he has to say to you? Grab somebody and say, you better get ready. If you wasn't serious about it, you should have just set out when we was worshiping. If you weren't really real about that sacrifice, you shouldn't have put it on the altar. I just told you, when you release, he will release. So make sure you ready when he shows up. Zacharias was in the church praying, and the spirit popped up on that choker. And say, let's see if you really about what you say you about. Oh, we're going to see in a couple months. Oh, yeah, because I'm looking for it. I'm expecting it. When he show up, I'm going to say, here I am, Lord. I'm ready. I'm looking. I'm waiting. I'm anticipating. I'm expecting. I'm just letting you know now. What you saw this morning ain't going to be nothing. Because when he show up, I'm going to be good and ready. Somebody say good and ready. You know how when you expecting somebody to pick you up to take you somewhere and you keep coming to the door. God dog, he ain't got here yet. I'm looking. Every day I wake up, I'm going, I'm looking at the door. God dog, I got my shoes on. I got my shirt on. I got my belt buckled because I'm ready. What you going to do when he show up? You better be ready when he show up. Good messes, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Are you really looking for it? Zacharias, he showed up and Zacharias said, how shall I know this? What is there for you to know, man? Ain't nothing for you to know. And, and look at what it said. And the angel said unto him, he said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and God sent me to speak unto you and to show you these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be what? Hmm. Hmm. Thou shalt be what? Thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou... thou Thou believest not my word, which shall be, it's going to be fulfilled, and it's going to happen in this season. But guess what? You're going to be standing over there looking dumb. I'm just telling you, you better mix it. Somebody say, you better mix it. Yeah, you got to mix it, or you're going to be looking dumb. Now, what's the big deal about him? What's the big deal about it? What's the big deal about him being dumb? He had to finish doing his assignment in the temple. He finished his assignment in the temple. 
And the word of God, he said, it's going to be fulfilled. He goes home. And when he got home, sure enough, Elizabeth got pregnant. So she got pregnant. And guess what happened? When she got pregnant, her homegirl got pregnant. That same angel that showed up to Zacharias showed up at her homegirl Mary house. When the angel showed up to Zacharias, he said, how shall I know this? When he showed up to Mary, she said, how are we going to get this done? See, Mary knew it was going to happen. She didn't say, how shall I know this? See, when Gabriel came to Mary, she said, I already know, but I ain't got no man, so just let me know how you're going to do this. I'm trying to show you something. I, I, I'm trying to show you something. If you don't mix this, if you don't mix this thing, you're going to be left looking dumb. So look, so look, so look. While Elizabeth was pregnant, Mary got pregnant. And Mary showed up to the house. And guess what they did? They had a Holy Ghost party. Am I lying to you? When Mary showed up, Elizabeth's baby jumped. And if you study the word, it said they went to singing and enjoying the word. And guess what Zacharias was doing? In the corner, looking dumb. You better mix it up. Yeah, you got to mix it up. Because if you don't mix it up, you're going to be standing over there looking down while everybody else having a Holy Ghost party. Don't be mad at me. Be mad with yourself. You got the same recipe I got. You got the same ingredients I got. You heard the same word I heard. I want some profit. Your profit is what's left over after you put in. Have anybody put, have you put some in? Have you sacrificed? So why sacrifice and not stay long enough and, why, and not mix and don't get any of the profit? That's a bad investment. If you're going to put in, you might as well mix something up. I'm just trying to help you this morning because you want to experience the boom. If you're going to experience the boom, you got to be able to mix the word with faith. And the first way I do that is I got to make my mouth work for me. Mark 11, 23 say, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, somebody say say, unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things shall, that he saith shall come to pass. What are you saying? Over in James, James, because we're talking about faith, right? I got to mix the word with faith. Now, we ain't just up here hyping. We're trying to get help, amen? The word of God says that now faith is the substance. I know you know your word. That now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it is the of things not seen. Now faith is the substance, substance, the tangible stuff. I have faith that when I step down, I'm going to land. That's substance. Now we're going to talk about evidence. See, over in James, it talks about the mouth. True faith is evident in your words. We just discussed that out of the abundance of the heart, man speaketh. If you really want to know what's on somebody's heart, just sit around and let them talk. They'll eventually talk their way into what it is they really, really big on. If they really love sports, if you're around them long enough, they're going to talk sports. If they really like cars and they're into cars, you hung around them long they're going to talk cars. They're into politics. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. James chapter 3 talks about true evidence is in what you say. He say this, he says over in James 3, it dedicate like 12 verses to the mouth and the tongue. And it say some, it say some crazy stuff. It say that a horse, if you want to control a horse, you put a bit in his mouth. And I can pull that horse 
and I could turn his body because I got control of his mouth. Then it goes on and talk about a ship. It say, though the ship be big and it get carried by the waves and the wind, if you really want to take control of a ship, it got a small rudder. And whichever way the captain turn it, that's the way that thing going to turn. Talking about the mouth. You got to make your mouth work for you. Then he go on, he say this. He says, the mouth, no, though it be a small member of the body, he compared it to a small spark that'll burn down a whole forest. Did you hear what I just said? So you got a weapon that can start a fire. When you get the talking right, it'll talk you all over the place and put you in a situation. You can talk your way into a blessing. I dare you to just start speaking the word of God over yourself. Start anointing yourself. Lay hands on yourself. I dare you to speak over your babies and your grandbabies and your ne- Speak over. The word is powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It appears going in and it appears coming out. You better make your mouth work for you. Some of us ain't speaking up enough. You being too shy. You being too, you better learn how to say something. Open your mouth and say something. I, I, I want you to really understand. I want you to understand. He said this. He said the mouth is power. It can spark a fire. But the problem is this. Sometimes we act like them. Mm, I hate to admit it. Because he kept going on and he said, with the same mouth, you bless God, but then you turn around and cuss man. Now, don't get caught up on the cussing. Don't get caught up. That's not the real issue. The issue is this. He's then he's going to say, if I got a faucet, I can't spit out good water and then spit out bitter water. What he's saying is, you can't speak one way one day and then speak another way another day. Because what you're doing is, I'm taking two steps forward and then I take two steps back and I'm still in the same place. Perhaps you haven't moved. You haven't moved because you're blessing on one day and you're cussing. Don't get caught up in the cussing. You got to make your mouth work for you. I'm going to give you some more word. There was a woman, you know the story, with an issue of blood. She had been going 12 years to doctors trying to get it figured out. She heard. Study the scripture. She heard that Jesus was coming to town. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it is the evidence of things not seen. She heard. Then the word of God says she came from behind and she pressed. Now we're seeing some substance. And then she, the Bible said, I didn't say this. The Bible said she said, hope you get that. So she got some substance. She's moving towards, and she said, if I can just touch, if I can just touch. So she's moving, and she's saying, make sure you're moving and you're saying are going in the right direction. I can't be, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it, but I'm moving backwards. And I can't be moving for, I don't know if this is going to work, because now... A house divided against itself cannot stand. It talks about in the Bible, in James, you're going to be tossed to and fro. You're going to waver because you're unstable because you got a double mind. I'm just trying to free you up this morning. My saying and my doing have to be on the same page. My mixing, I got to say and do. I mix the two and they become one. I'm doing what I'm saying. I'm saying what I'm doing. Now I'm mixing. And when I go to mixing, 
she mixed, she mixed, and she touched. And he said, who touched me? You know why? That was a rare faith. Everybody ain't got it. That's sacrificial. That's laying it down. Sacrificing. She came from behind. Wasn't even supposed to be there. Everything she did was out of line. But God. But God. But God. See, don't get caught up in how you look, where you from. If you really want to move God, just have some faith. I'm just trying to help you this morning. So, you got to make sure you make your mouth work for you. The next thing I want to tell you, if you're going to mix this, you got to have the ability to be rude. And I know that sounds crazy, but sometimes you, you just got to be rude. So, the I is this. You got to interrupt the party. You got to interrupt the party. Matthew 13. Jesus spoke of a parable, and he said a farmer went out to sow his seed, and he was scattering the seed. Some fell along the path, and the birds came. So some birds came, and they ate it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched. So we see that the seed was sown. The bird came and got some. The sun scorched some. And then it also said that some fell among thorns. And when the thorns grew up, the plants choked the word. Oop, I ain't mean to say word. Seed. But the seed is the, and the word is the. So we got to see this. We got to understand this. I want you to see that. I want to pull from this, and I want you to understand this. Birds came. The sun came. And some of them got choked by some plants. When did it come? After the word was sown. We have to understand that there is a fight for your seed. Understand? It's a fight for your seed. Now, the bird, that's one element you got to deal with. Then you got to deal with the sun. Then you got to deal with the plant. No fault of your own. You didn't tell the birds to come. They just showed up. You can't control the sun. It's hot. The thorns choke the seed. You have to understand there is a fight over the word. Just like you sitting up in here in church getting a good word. The Bible says the adversary is running to and fro seeking whom he may devour. The enemy comes to kill to steal and destroy. So you have to understand there's a fight for your seed. So in order to mix this up, I got to interrupt the party. What you mean by that? Yeah, 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 you got to interrupt the party. Every party ain't meant for you to go to. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta leave the party. You got to interrupt the party. What you mean? Problems. Problems. Come in, Makai. Problems. Problem. Problems will show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Problems show up just like them birds. Problems. Problems is just stuff I got to deal with. I got to deal with some stuff on a daily basis. This is just my everyday, my everyday problems, and they show up. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, uh, Nasir. And, and then, and see, Nasir... And Makai, shake his hand right quick, man. They, see, they homeboys. You know, so if, if he show up, he ain't coming by himself. So problems show up, and guess what? He texts, he texts, he texts this thing right here. And this is, this is stuff that intimidates me. Oh, don't act like you ain't been intimidated by nothing. <laughs> see, see, this represents what, what, what they was dealing with with Goliath. It's too big for me to handle. The intimidating stuff. When I look at it, it looks too big. It's going to overwhelm me. So I got problems, and he done text his homeboy, and now I got to deal with some stuff that's intimidating. 
I got to deal with it. Mr. Screen, come here, Mr. Screen. You know, they, you know, you know this joker here, man. This, this the life of the party. You know, he, he just going to, he get up, everybody just turn up another level. So, so, so when he shows up, he shows up, then he want to turn up. And then when he turn up, then he want to turn up more. See, what he is, is tomorrow stuff. This is when I look down the line, I'm anticipating some problems I'm going to have to deal with. So, so this is for my folk. God spoke to you to start a business. But instead of you starting a business, you worried about tomorrow. What if is his nickname? That's his nickname. He, he, tomorrow, he tomorrow stuff, but they call him what if. You know, you get nickname. That's what if. Now, nah, that's what if. And guess who he got on standby? He got his homeboy anxiety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you ain't heard about that? When you hang out with, with what if and anxiety, they'll, they'll mess around and call their homeboy D. Yeah, Big D. Y'all ain't heard about Big D? That's what Elijah had. That's depression. So you, you hang around with him. He called anxiety. And, 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 and then they hook up, and then they call Big D. So now you're depressed. Oh, man. So I got problems. I got stuff intimidating me. I got tomorrow stuff. Come on, look. Come on, come on, book. Come here, book. Now I got a why. This yesterday stuff. See, this yesterday stuff. He yesterday stuff, but his nickname, Guilt. I got a problem mixing my word with faith because I'm still hung up on something I did 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. I don't feel worthy. I can't mix it because I'm dealing with yesterday stuff, a.k.a. guilt. I'm still walking around with my head down. I don't feel free to worship. Everybody else lifting their hands up, talking about a release. I can't do that. I, you must don't know what I did. You wasn't there. You don't understand. I'm still feeling guilty about something happened 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. I never really shook it. So you got P. You got I. You got T. You got Y. And that's pity. And they show up, and they have a party. I'm just trying to show you something today. You got to interrupt the party. You, 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 you got to find a way. You got to find a way. You got. I was at a party last night, and I knew I had to preach. And they were hanging out. I was trying to have a good time. You know, you try to have a good time. And Gator game on, and you know, talking loud. And I'm like, I got to get up out of here, man. Because you go to a party and you say, oh, I'll just be here. I told my mama, I said, I'll be back. You know I got to preach in the morning. I'm not going to stay long. But you get there, you go to having a good time. You're catching up with everybody. And you end up staying longer than you intend. I was just going to come for a couple minutes. I was just going to come for a couple minutes. It can't be real. Since I'm at the party, I might as well have a couple drinks with the guys. So I go to the party. I hang out. I get drunk off of my pity. And I walk around hungover. Never sober. Because I've been with my problems. I'm looking at the stuff I'm intimidated by. I'm thinking about what's down the line, and I'm still dealing with some of the stuff that happened yesterday. If you're going to mix this thing, you got to interrupt the party. You got to interrupt the party. Well, how are we going to do this? It was a man in the Bible. He had a son. Son had a spirit on him. Disciples tried to get the spirit out. It was a big fuss going on. He said, hey, we can't get it out, man. Jesus showed up. The man said, hey, this is what I got going on. My son, he got a spirit on him. It threw him in the fire. Then it take him to the water. 
Then it throw them to the fire. Then it take them to the water. Say, how long have we been doing? He said, man, it's been going on for a long time. Been going on for a long time. Been going on for a long time, man. I, 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 can't, get, I can't shake it, man. He say, he say but, 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 but if, it's, if it's anything, you know, you know, I ain't, I ain't gonna really try to bother you like that. But if it's if it's if it's if it's like you know, if if it's anything you can do, if you feel like you can, you know, help a brother out, you know, if if, if you ain't really busy, you know, you ain't got nothing on your schedule, nothing like that. I know you're busy and everything, you know. If, if, if and, and Jesus said, if do you know who you dealing with? You got a problem. I'm here. He said, he said, if. If. And listen to how the man responded. Can we be real? He interrupted the party. Every now and then we all go through our moments where we our problems show up and we feel overwhelmed. Can we be real? Are you getting intimidated? Can we, can we be, you look down the road and you get some anxiety. I sure hope this thing turn out how it's supposed to turn out. And every now and then your past will show up. You just be sitting at the house, you, I can't believe I did that. He was right there at the party. He say, I don't know if you can do this, man. If you, if, 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 Jesus had to remind, do you know who he's talking to? And you know what the man said? He said, Lord, the Bible said he had tears in his eyes. He said, Lord, I do believe. Help my, under, my unbelief. When he spoke that, what he did was he interrupted the party. He interrupted the party. When you feel yourself at the door, finna walk in that party, you got to be able to speak to yourself. Lord, I know what you told me. Forgive me, I just had a moment. Lord, I do believe. Help. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. I heard it. I heard it, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I really, I, I believe you, Lord. I believe you. I believe, but some stuff showed up that I wasn't expect out of nowhere. I mean, it just wasn't on my radar. I checked the weather. I didn't see it approaching, and it just showed up at my door, and now I got to deal with it. I believe. Help my unbelief. I, I, I want you to be real with yourself and understand this. It's going to show up problem is going to show up. You're going to be intimidated by some stuff. You're going to be, you, you, tomorrow's stuff, you're going to be worried about some stuff. It's natural. It happens. And the past showed up. It shows up. Give it a moment. But don't you stay at that party. You get your keys. Hey, 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 you get your keys. And, and if you have to, call a buddy. Hey, where you at, girl? You won't believe where I'm at. I done pulled up to this party. You better get your butt home. Leave that party now. Do you want me to come pick you up? See, sometimes people have to call. You call somebody, they have to lift you up. They have to encourage you. See, every now and then somebody have to send you a text and say, I was just thinking about you. I don't know why, but the Lord laid you on my heart. Get up out of that party. Time for you to go home. Yeah. So, I got to make sure my mouth worked for me. I got to make sure I interrupt the party. I can't stay there. I can't stay there. I got to move on. And the last thing I need you to do is this. It's an X. You got to review your exes. Go back to your exes. Now, I ain't talking about your ex, boo. We ain't, we, ain't, we ain't talking about your ex, boo. What you want to go back to your ex, boo, for? No, you move on from your ex, boo. No, no. What I'm talking about is this. The word of God, David said this. He said, I've been young and now I'm old. He said, never 
Somebody say never. Never Never have I seen the righteous forsaken. It don't say something about begging for bread. (laughs) I ain't got to beg for nothing. Because he's faithful. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken. I ain't got to worry about begging. Because he won't leave me nor will he forsake me. So you have to remind yourself. You have to review your exes. What you mean? Your experiences. <laughs> yeah, your experiences. You know you've experienced. If you're sitting in this room today, if you're sitting here right now, September 11, 2022, I know you've experienced the faithfulness of God. See, what you have to do is every now and then, see, what happens, you can get on a job for a long time. And you forget how you got the job. You got the job because of your resume. So every now and then, you have to go back and look at your resume. It was a time when I didn't think I was going to make it. It was a time that I didn't see how I was going to get out, what I was going to get out. But he made a way. And then there was another time I got in some trouble, did something I ain't had no business doing, and he covered me. Then there was another time where I needed some grace and he graced me. And then there was another time I needed some mercy and he gave me some mercy. Then there was another time I was about to give up and quit and he gave me some strength. You got to make sure you go and look at your exes, your past experiences. Lest you forget where he brought you from. It took faith to get me started. See, faith got me started. Faith kept me going, and faith going to pull me home. But you got to mix it. See, every now and then, you got to go back and look at some of your old stuff, your experiences. And if you don't got no experiences, you got to look at some examples. Yeah, so I got exes, I got experiences, and I got examples. What do you mean? I know somebody that had cancer, and God delivered them. I know somebody that has some true issues and God delivered. So if you ain't got no experiences, you better start looking at somebody else. Example. Yeah, I got to mix this thing up. See, I got to mix it. It's important for me to mix this. If I want to experience the boom, I've got I got I to gotta mix it up. I got to make sure my mouth worked for me. I got to interrupt the party. And I got to rue my experiences and other people's examples because he's always been faithful. I have faith because he's faithful. I can't remember a time that he failed me. He's all right with me. Now, 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 look here. Now, look here. I want to make my daddy proud. You know how he always do you? He'll start that thing off in the text, and he'll take you around the world, and he say, Since, so he'll say, so you won't think that I ain't a good preacher. That's what he say, don't he? And then that joke will bring you on home. Now, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. We serve a God of grace and mercy. We, we serve a God that will cover us when we mess up. Because we sit up here, and I, I ain't going to lie, I was hard on Zacharias. I, Zachariah, he was over there looking dumb. But if you go and look at the text, that ain't how the story ended. <laughs> when that baby was born, the word of God says that the angel opened up his mouth. And Zacharias changed his whole too. He said, what a God I serve. He has redeemed his people. And he starts singing and praising God. Because God opened up his mouth. It's good to know that even when I'm acting dumb, I may have to be punished for a little bit. But he comes back and he opens up and he looses my mouth so I can shout out some praise. The Bible said he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And that joker went to prophesying. So he went from just praying to now he 
prophesying. So he went to a whole nother level. Even after you look dumb, he'll come back and redeem you and put you on a whole nother level. But you got to mix it up. Yeah, you got to mix that thing up. Mix the word. Mix the word with your faith. Make sure you got some substance and some evidence. And you'll experience your boom. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank him for that powerful move. When, when somebody gives you something, you're supposed to say thank you. You ain't thanking me. That ain't about me. You must be crazy. if you. That came from the Holy Spirit. That came from God. God spoke to you this morning. So you ought to praise him for what he said to you. You better start mixing right now. Go to start mixing that thing with your faith right now. Go to start declaring some stuff right now. Mix it up right. You ain't got to wait to get home. Mix it up right now. Yeah. Yeah, I know when to shut up. He done. He done spoke the word. Now all you got to do is mix it. You got the recipe. You got the ingredients. Now just go home and mix it. And after you mix that thing good, we got to set it in the oven. And we going to set it in the oven and let it cook. Only thing I ask you is this. When your cake come out, please share it with somebody else. Ain't no need of you eat that whole cake by yourself. You just being greedy. So when that cake come out, make sure you give me a piece. Tell me about what he did for you and how he turned that thing around. Yeah, don't be selfish with your cake. Cut me a piece. Bring my grandma a piece. Bring my aunt to your piece. Bring my mama a piece. Stop being selfish. with. Stop keeping your blessing to yourself. After he bless you, turn around and bless me. And I'll bless you by God has spoke, amen. God has spoke. Hallelujah. We thank him and praise him. Father God, we lift you up. We magnify you. We thank you for this word in this place. We pray that this was a changing word, that we'll see some change, Father God, some tangible change, some eternal change. And we thank you that you've given us a word. God, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us to mix it with our faith. The word of God said that you have dealt with us. You have dealt us the measure of faith. Amen. Help us to tap into our faith. We thank you and praise you for this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. For those of you that are joining us on the live, we appreciate you. Uh, there's many different ways that you can give. Uh, you should see it on the screen. We got uh, give a fly. You got cash out, or you can um, drop it off at the church. Uh, we will have Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, we'll also have prayer in the mornings from Tuesdays and Thursdays. Also, I'd like to make an announcement on Tuesday at 6 p.m. at Sister Albertina's house. There will be a moving beyond meeting. Moving beyond meeting at six o'clock at uh, Sister Albertina Brown's house. Also, millennial. Uh, movement plugged in will be beginning back up on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. All are welcome. All are welcome. We're targeting the millenniums, but all are welcome. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us on the live stream today. We pray that you are blessed. If you would like to uh, join the church or you need prayer, should be a number for you to call. We appreciate you for joining us, and we would love to see your face here live. In the sanctuary, amen? We don't want you to miss out on the presence of God as he moves, amen? Be blessed. Amen. Let us stand as we prepare, as we prepare to leave. Pastor was so excited, saying he get a break, amen? So a break for him means work for me. I believe I'm done, am I right? I believe I'm done. So I feel like he, he felt, amen? Get on back here, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. But God is good. He's faithful. 
We appreciate him. Uh, we do want to make sure we take partake in giving. We had the two baskets uh, in the front, and we also have baskets in the back. Uh, so we'll pray as we get ready for this missile. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for your presence in this place. We pray that you continue to keep us and nourish us as we leave. We honor the man and the woman of God over this house. God, we pray that you continue to strengthen them. Give them rest, Father God, and give them strength as we continue on this journey. We give you all the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray.